Hey, it's Andre, and today's video is a special video that is partnered with HBO Max where you can watch seasons one, two, and the new season three of Titans only on HBO Max. And in celebration of Titans season three on HBO Max, they are doing a giveaway to celebrate the release of Titans season three. You can actually go to my Instagram, at Black Nerd, to find out the details and possibly enter yourself. Maybe you'll win some prizes. And not only can you watch the new season three of Titans on HBO Max, it is also the place to find all your favorite DC titles. We got DC movies, series, animated series, original series. HBO Max reached out to me. They're like, how about you pick a DC show watch it all and talk about it here. And I was like, oh yeah, I gotta do that. I decided to go with a show that I used to watch back when it first aired, but I had not seen it in a while and I had seen several episodes of it, but have not seen it in full. Luckily, HBO Max has almost all of the episodes. We are going back to the 2000s to talk about Static Shock. Superhero Static Shock. What, what? Gotta be, gotta be, gotta be. <laughs> I mixed two of the theme songs there. Static Shock had multiple theme songs. So Static Shock, the animated series, was loosely based on the Static comic book series from Milestone Comics. Milestone Comics was founded in 1993 by African-American writers and artists who wanted to see more representation in comic books, wanted to see more comic book characters of color. So they created a number of original characters, including Static, and Milestone Comics was special because it was its own label, but at the same time, it was also published and distributed by DC Comics. In September of 2000, 2000, all the way up to May of 2004, Static Shock was on the airwaves on Kids WB and it aired for 52 episodes, not only having a first run on Kids WB, but also having reruns of the series air on Cartoon Network. There was even a time in 2009 where Static Shock aired on Disney XD. That's how cool Static is. He was able to jump over and hang out with the mouse for a little bit. Not too long. Warner Brothers was like, okay, okay, you can have him for a little bit, but don't, don't get too close. The series follows Virgil Hawkins. He's an African-American teenager just trying to chill and hang out with his best friend Richie, do his school stuff, help out his dad at the community center, but unfortunately, he got a bully at school. But he luckily gets some protection, but then we find out that the bully and the kid that gave him protection are from rival gangs. And the guy that gave him protection was like, look Virgil, I'll keep giving you this protection, but you're gonna have to roll with my gang, and we're gonna have a little gang war, and you gotta come along, and by the way, here's a gun. This is the first episode. Virgil goes to hopefully stop it, but unfortunately the gang war gets out of control. The cops show up, happen near some docks, like most things often do in these types of stories. There's some chemical gas that's there. It accidentally gets released, gets spread out, and it hits multiple people in the town of Dakota. And if you get hit by this gas, you sometimes get some mutated metahuman powers. They refer to this event as the Big Bang, and anyone that gets affected by this gas and becomes a metahuman are referred to as bang babies. And we're talking all kinds of power, fire power, flying power, turning things into ice, turning into water. There's a dude that can literally like, make his own portals, like create shadow portals in the darkness and just go wherever he wants. You had one girl like straight up zombify the entire school because she wanted to win like an election. And then one dude becomes an armadillo. Don't know why. And one dude gets big feet. As for Virgil himself, he gets electromagnetic powers and with the help of his best friend, Richie, he gets some cool tech to help him out. He dons a super suit and becomes the superhero Static. Yes, let's just go ahead and get this out of the way because I know someone's gonna write it in the comments. Static Shock is the name of the series. Static is the name of the superhero. So when this series first came out, I was like, oh shoot, cause you know, I was like, oh, okay, all right. Black superhero, let's go. It has a little bit of a lighter fare than say Batman, the animated series, but you could tell it was still in that universe. You could definitely tell in a few episodes it was definitely in that universe. But it was doing its own thing. It was able to mix that comic book culture and that hip hop culture and teen culture at the time, that early 2000s culture, mix it all together and make it work while also throwing in some life lessons as well. When the show wanted to go there, it went there. It gets a little jokey at times. Virgil especially is a bit of a jokester. He likes to do wise cracks while he's fighting the villains. Kind of reminds me of a, another superhero. I won't say him right now, cause you know, this is a DC video, but you know, he kind of reminds me of, you know, somebody else. But watching this show again, I actually appreciated Virgil even more as a character because I forgot until I watched this again, just how much he kind of reminds me of myself and some of my friends that 
I grew up with. What was cool about Virgil is he was kind of a well-rounded individual. Yeah, he liked hip hop. Yeah, he liked sports. He also liked video games. He also liked technology and science. He was also trying to do well in school. Like he was a bit cool and a bit geeky. And that's what I remember from a lot of people that I recall growing up. And I would even say a little bit myself, I was probably more geeky than cool, but there was a mix. I know a couple of rap songs. So I just thought that was nice. It's very easy, particularly with a black teenager in a cartoon to make him one specific type. I like that Virgil had a lot of different things going for him. And he had his friend Richie, who was a little bit geekier, but also, you know, he could roll as well. He also had a really cool family. He had his dad that was helping out the community center and taught him some life lessons. He had his older sister, Sharon, who they would always butt heads, but you know, they cared about each other. And even though he was a good superhero, he was never a perfect superhero. He wouldn't even have to learn lessons. Cause there would be a couple of episodes where he would get a little cocky. He would show off a little bit, or sometimes his emotions would get the better of him. If like something happened to one of his friends, he wouldn't think straight and just kind of want to take action immediately and so it was kind of neat to see how he would have to evolve himself not only as a person but also as a superhero also had to be kind of a thinker as well he has electromagnetic powers he can shoot electricity he can get electricity from other things but there were times where he would go up against a character to be like oh no i got you i made a water or i can stop your electricity so sometimes he would have to think about how he would fight a villain in certain circumstances. He couldn't just zap him all the time. So I thought that was a neat concept every once in a while. Virgil had to think his way out of this situation. And he also had a number of villains to fight. Now, when I watched this show back in the day, you would watch like one episode on a Saturday morning or Sunday morning on Kids WB. Sometimes depending on what episode you watch, you might get the villain of the week. One cool thing about them having this big bang event and having so many people in the town being affected and being metahumans is that you could at any time bring in some brand new character with some insane power and use it. And this show did that a lot. But watching the show back to back to back, I was like, oh shoot, a lot of these characters keep coming back. They have a number of recurring villains they have a number of recurring characters in this show there was some really cool world building that this show was doing i think there was some really cool character development that this series had and i feel like i recognize that more now having watched a lot of the episodes back to back that I maybe didn't notice as much when i would catch a random episode here a random episode there out of order get a little bit deeper in the lore that this show provided. What was also cool was that even though Static would go up against a lot of these characters, a lot of these villains, there were some episodes, there were a couple times where like, all right, I don't like you, you don't like me, but there's this bigger threat out there. So I guess this one time we are gonna have to work together. Like there would be times where someone would try to capture everyone who had powers and they try to take powers from everybody. So Static is like, all right, all right, let's, let's squash our beef. Let's deal with this and then we'll hate each other tomorrow. Which I think is cool because it gives these characters more depth. Some of these villains were pretty cool. Like there's Hot Streak. That was actually the bully that was messing with Virgil in the first episode. Gets fire powers, throwing fire everywhere. Got his pants kind of sagging. I'll beat you up with fire. And he always has his music behind him like fire, fire. There's this one dude, Shiv, who can turn his hands or his arms into any weapons. There's this one girl, Talon, who's like half human, half bird. And she's got that like Banshee slash Black Canary attack. Like, Wah! and knocks you down and also she can fly. They got bounty hunters in this thing. There's this girl named Puff who's like half human, half gas and she can like spit out acid gas and she got little Afro puffs and then she hangs with this big purple dude named Onyx. They even got their own like Lex Luthor. It's this dude named Alva. He's like that rich business dude that, you know, he helps out the town, but you know, he got some shady stuff going on on the side. His son even tries to impress him, but like ends up freezing himself. His son like, gets a whole suit and like is able to change into various powers, but he goes too crazy with it and ends up freezing himself. So there's an ongoing storyline of Alva trying to unfreeze his son. So again, there are times where he's going up against Static and there are times when he's like, nah, Static's gonna help me. And there's times where he tells people that work for him um, leave Static alone. That leads me to these two dudes. Their names are Specs and Trapper. And it was funny is they actually meet Virgil first because Virgil gets accepted in this really cool program, gets to go to one of Alva's laboratories and they work for Alva, Specs and Trapper. And they, they throw that, you know, that like that, uh, that passive aggressive, they throw them aggressions at, at Virgil, like a little bit like the, oh, this kid. I'm like, all right. And they always like, Mr. Specs, look at this guy. I see him, Mr. Trapper, thinking he's as smart as us. I'm like, ooh. Punch him in the face. Oh, but the best villain is freaking Ebon. So Ebon is the shadow dude. He literally is all black and purple and he can just make like portals and like go inside of it. He can pull you inside of it. He's a leader of the gang and he's always like, I'm gonna get that static. 
Static's always messing up my plans. And like he always gets someone to try to help him, but whenever they try to double cross him, he's all like, now I hate you and I'm gonna attack you too. He always tries to manipulate people and get people on his side. He is the big bad. He is the big bad of this series. And he's so good. And what's wild is he has a brother Adam, who's also known as Rubber Band Man because he can stretch his body. He actually starts out as a villain because some music producer like stole his samples or something. But then he eventually is like, nah, man, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna live a good life. And Ebon's like, nah, I'm gonna bring you back to that crime because you my brother. But eventually he's like, nah, bruh, I'm gonna live my life. Also this girl Sharon's kind of being cool with me and I'm working with Static now, so I ain't doing that crime thing. So I thought it was really cool to see someone evolve. What's also cool is that not every metahuman, every bang baby in the show is technically a villain. Maybe they're just a little misunderstood. Maybe they weren't being listened to or something was going on in their life outside of their powers that led them to do what they were doing. So I thought it was really neat that while you did have some villains on the show, you had some characters that was like, they're not evil, they're just going through something mentally because of what has affected them. There's this really very touching episode that happens around Christmas time where they talk about this girl who had lost her parents, she was homeless, and she's like turning everything into ice. But you find out that it's just because she's scared and because she doesn't have anybody. It's not because she's mean or evil. It's just like, I don't know what to do. So of course they try to give her some help. Sometimes Static will have to fight you. Sometimes Static might just need to talk to you. Just figure out what's going on with you. And that saves the day. And there's also this one character, Shebang, that shows up in a number of episodes. Yes, it is her name. She actually is not a bang baby. She's not a metahuman. She was like created in a lab. She's like a science experiment. She's a superhero as well. Even joins Static and Richie a couple of times. Richie even becomes a superhero at one point. At first, he's just Virgil's friend who knows of the secret of Static and even helps him out by making cool gadgets for Static to use. He actually got affected by the Big Bang as well. It just came a little bit later. He actually gets super intelligence. He's like super smart. So because of that, he's able to create a backpack that has artificial intelligence. He makes all these different weapons, makes a super suit of his own and calls himself Gear. That happens in the third season. Also in that season, uh, Static gets a new outfit. Virgil also gets some other superheroes to help him out. There's an episode where he actually goes to Africa, which is really cool. Cause it's like, you think about that, the early 2000s, you got a cartoon airing on weekend mornings where they're like, hey, we're gonna send the characters to Africa. While he's there, he meets this hero called Anansi the Spider, who's based after African folklore and he has the power of illusion. So he can like change himself into other people or disappear even though he's still there. And of course, because his name is Anansi the Spider, they make jokes about, oh, are you gonna do like a web shooting thing? And he's like, I am not that kind of spider. Also, there's one episode where Static teams up with this old superhero from the 60s called Soul Power. He also has powers like Static. I have a feeling that they wanted to use Black Lightning. Maybe there was like some rights thing where they couldn't use Black Lightning. I just love that Static teamed up with this old school superhero who was all like Soul Power. He even had like a little dance when he fought you. <laughs> Working with Soul Power helped him respect his elders. Working with Anansi helped him to learn more about his culture. I think that was just really cool when the series would do stuff like that. Oh, but Static doesn't just team up with superheroes. He also teams up with celebrities, music stars, and athletes like Shaq's in the episode. There's a whole episode where there's like a basketball super team. <laughs> Lil Romeo shows up and even performs a theme song. AJ from the Backstreet Boys has like an episode in this. But man, you want to talk about some team ups. Static Shock had them crossovers, man. They would have Static teaming up with the DC Universe. No cinematic universe needed. That universe happened right there on our television sets in the 2000s, man. Static teamed up with Batman multiple times. He teamed up with Batman to fight the Joker because the Joker like recruited a bunch of bang babies to join him, be part of his new gang in Dakota because he thought he could do all he could do in Gotham. But Batman was like, nah, Joker, wherever you go, I'm going and I'm gonna get Static to work with me. And then Static works with Batman and fights the Joker. That's just so cool. And they even have like a little hip hop version of the Batman theme song playing in the background when they're fighting like, they team up to fight Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy in an episode. There's an episode where Static travels into the future, does a full on Batman Beyond crossover, meets Terry, meets an older Bruce Wayne, even meets an older version of himself. I think at one point, Terry from Batman Beyond calls Static Beyonce. <laughs> There's a two part episode where they meet up with the Justice League. You see the Flash, you see Martian Manhunter, you see Green Lantern. You see them at the Watchtower having to fight Brainiac. Oh, and speaking of Green Lantern, there is a great episode. John Stewart, Green Lantern, does a bunch of crimes, so everyone thinks that Green Lantern is now a villain, and even Static's like, I trusted him! 
<laughs> he betrayed me. But then we find out that it was all Sinestro in disguise. And so then you get Static teaming up with Green Lantern to fight Sinestro. And I just love that. You got Green Lantern and Static and they're both voiced by the same actor. This show was amazing. Obviously I thought that was just super cool that they were able to use that DC connection to bring these superheroes together, expanding that universe. Obviously, even though Static had a comic book series under DC with Milestone Comics, I felt like that was just nice to have them work together. I feel like it was another way of just going, look, this is a superhero just like all the rest of them. Batman's up in here, you know, the Justice League is up in here. This is a show for everybody. If you like superheroes, you like Static as well. It was a show that anybody could watch. That being said, this show goes there when it needs to go there. They talk about gangs in this show. They talk about bullying. There's an episode about a kid getting bullied and you know, he tries to do something about it. Before Richie becomes gear, there's an episode where he meets this man who got affected by the Big Bang, but his power is that he can give other people powers, but only for a limited time. So Richie gets addicted to constantly wanting to have that power from this dealer. I don't know if that's an allegory for anything, but we even have a couple of heartbreaking episodes where we see the emotions that Virgil goes through with the loss of his mother. And then there is the episode. <laughs> and if you have watched Static Shock, you probably know the episode I'm talking about. Uh, Virgil has never gone to Richie's house. Virgil's like, you always hang out at my house. Let's go to your house. And he's like, all right. I think my dad ain't home so we can go to my house. And you're like, wait, what? And then Virgil's hanging out with Richie and his dad come home and you learn something real quick about his daddy. His dad's like, who's this Virgil guy? I don't, I don't, I don't like this. And I was like, oh, is this show going there? And sure enough, there's one scene where he's like, I don't like him hanging out with Virgil. I don't like him or his car. And I'm like, oh boy. Oh, Static went there in season one. That episode was good too. What's cool is that you see Richie's dad later in the show and he's all like, I ain't gonna do that no more. <laughs> I'm cool now, we cool now. But that's what was cool about this series. It was able to talk about topics like that. It was just part of the episode. It was just part of the story they wanted to tell. But at the same time, it never lost sight of the type of series it was. A series that was action packed, had humor, had heart, had humanity, and also was just fun. Just fun to watch. Fun to see all these characters, fun to see all these fights, fun to hear that cool music that would play. It was just so neat to see fighting sequences, but now with like hip hop music playing in the background. It was just a really cool show. Overall, I just absolutely love this series. It was really cool to watch an episode of this show on occasion when I would catch it back in the day, but now watching it 20 years later, binging it, I think I appreciate it even more now. It actually holds up. There are a, a few references that are definitely some early 2000s references. The storylines, the characters, the themes, I think they still are relevant today. It was cool and empowering to see a character like Static on television doing their thing. Extra respect because, you know. It was a show that was able to speak to its culture, be something that I can definitely identify with, but at the same time being a show that everyone can enjoy just because Virgil was just a cool dude and a cool superhero. A cool superhero series I could watch alongside Batman, Superman, or the Teen Titans, or the Justice League. A couple of those I might need to watch every episode of as well. Maybe in the future. Have you ever watched Static Shock? If you have, tell me some of your favorite episodes or moments. If you haven't, let me know if you're gonna check it out now. I feel like if you like superhero cartoons, especially if you like DC superhero cartoons from back in the day and you somehow missed this one or maybe didn't catch all the episodes, almost all of the episodes are on HBO Max. I highly say go check it out, especially if you have HBO Max. And speaking of HBO Max, who sponsored this video, if you like classic DC cartoons like this, they got Batman anime series, Superman anime series, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, Young Justice, Teen Titans. They even have the old school super friends. Meanwhile, in the halls of justice, they got that. Some Michael Keaton Batman, some Val Kilmer Batman, some George Clooney Batman, you don't forget. That back credit card, it's all up in there. They even got a bunch of those DC directive DVD titles, which a lot of those are really good. Some of those animated ones are fire. But of course they got that recent stuff too. Your Aquaman, your Wonder Woman, your Justice League, your Zack Snyder's Justice League, Suicide Squad, The Suicide Squad. But that's until September 5th. You can also watch that in theaters. They also got new original series. Titans just released its third season on HBO Max. You have not seen Harley Quinn, that show is great. Harley Quinn is like watching a 90s, early 2000 DC animated series, but mature, like with 
curse words and blood and stuff, but it's also very funny. Clayface rules in that show. So if you have HBO Max and you need that DC fix, they are definitely the place to go. But if you don't have HBO Max, then I definitely recommend signing up. I have a link in the description so you can sign up for HBO Max. They actually have two plans going on right now. You can do an ad-free plan for $14.99 a month that also gets you those movies that come out the same day in theaters as well as on HBO Max. They also have an ad plan for $9.99 a month. And it's more than just DC stuff. They got like a lot of stuff on there. They got all kinds of movies, series, documentaries, gremlins. As you know, I like other streaming services as well, but when I need particular things, particularly DC things, I know HBO Max is the only place to get that. So check them out if you haven't done so already. Link in the description. Thanks again to HBO Max for sponsoring this video and just giving me a reason to talk about Static Shock. I mean, that's really cool. <laughs> I can do this all day. And if there's any other series that you would love for me to binge and talk about in this way, I would love to do this. I love talking about this type of thing and would love to do more of it. Thank you so much for watching this video and geeking out with me over Static Shock. I love you like a play cousin. I'm Audi 5000.